Hello and thanks for joining us for another Airbrush Asylum step-by-step -step video. In today's video we will be showing you how we created this Jack O' Lantern for Halloween. So we hope you enjoy this step-by-step -step and happy Halloween to everyone who's watching. So you'll notice that this artwork was sketched straight onto the canvas. What I did first was I painted the entire canvas black using Trident water-based airbrush paint. I let that dry. I printed out my sketch um, to the scale that I wanted. This particular canvas is 250mm by 250mm, so 25cm by 25cm. So a nice and small one, but I just wanted to do this tutorial just to show you how I go about painting something a little bit different and a little bit more cartoon looking so I do hope you enjoy it so once the reference was printed out or the sketch was printed out I um, flipped it the other way around on a light box and drew on the back with a chalk pencil I then lined up where I wanted to place the artwork so in this case I moved it to the lower part of the canvas there is a reason for that and you'll find that out later in the video um, once it was you know in the right position i then went over the top of that with a hb pencil so what that did was it transferred my chalk pencil straight onto the canvas now the outline came out okay but it wasn't as um, clear as what you see there so then what i did was i just went over freehand with a Faber-Castell Polychromous white pencil um, and I'll see if I can link up to that for you in the description but um, that worked really well and then as you can see now I'm using my Iwata CMC Plus Micron uh, this has a 0.23mm needle in it and I'm just airbrushing the white as to just to create a base colour uh, for our colour to lay on top because obviously once you've painted the um, canvas black you need to add white to you know allow the colours to sit on top of the black surface because the colours are predominantly transparent so hence why I'm using the white which is an opaque colour and I'm building my base and then I'm going to airbrush on top of that So just continuing on with my white, I'm now hitting those highlights in that carved section of the teeth. You also notice I did the same on the eyes. So we want it to look as though they have been carved out of the pumpkin. Get a bit of uh, tip drawing there. So just uh, that noise that you heard was me putting my fingers over the front and back bubbling so to just to release any dried paint that was on the end of the nozzle just to keep that flowing really nicely
he would have noticed that I've sped this part up so that um, you're not just watching me colour in for quite some time even though it doesn't take too long to do this but you get the idea there's um, there's not much to it really you want to be further away from the surface and just dust in the white paint from a distance just to get um, reasonable coverage you don't have to be too concerned if it's not 100% even you saw there it's splurted out a little bit um, it's not going to make that much of a difference because the pumpkin surface isn't going to be smooth so we don't mind having a little bit of texture you're also obviously going to get a bit of texture shining through from the surface of the canvas So you'll notice that I'm using the white there just to get a bit more coverage and a bit more brightness um, in those centre sections of the mouth because we're going to have a bit of a glow coming out of those areas so we want that to be nice and bright. The reason I didn't just coat over the whole lot straight away is because I wanted to try and keep um, kind of the registration of where I've got to go with it. So by doing it last it allowed me to do those other areas first. Uh, you may have just noticed then I switched to a Createx illustration color uh, orange and now I'm going to use that. I, I did add a little bit of reducer to it but not too much so I'd say probably just under a one to one mix I'd say because um, I still want some sort of coverage but I also want it to flow nicely so I'm using that color now as my base color for the entire jack-o'-lantern and I'm going to cover the uh, whole area there with it excluding obviously the cutout sections so we're going to use some other toning for those bits so again using my Iwata CMC Plus Micron I'd say probably running at about 20 psi something around there and a reasonable distance away but not too far so I'm still controlling um, and using paint on paint off keeping that air on all the time so pressing the trigger button right down and then just pulling back for paint as I need it obviously the closer you are the less you want to pull back and I, you'll notice that I'm up close around all the edges just so that I get a nice um, sharp edge and I control my overspray. Alright?
apologies for the compressor kicking in there but uh, you may hear that happen a few more times during the video Okay, so you can see we've got a pretty good coverage now on the entire surface of the jack-o'-lantern. So now we're ready to start to switch to the colour that we'll use in the glowing areas of the carved out parts of the eyes and the mouth. Okay, you can see I've got Trident Fluoro Yellow and I've reduced that down at least to a one-to-one -one mix. Now the reason I'm using fluoro yellow is because it is an extremely uh, obviously bright color so using that as a base is really going to give us that glow that we're looking for. Now whenever you're using any sort of fluoro paint just remember that it's not light fast so that means if this was for example painted on the top of a motorcycle tank or a, uh, some, a, a car bonnet um, or hood for those in America that are, are watching. Um, there's a chance that even with a clear coat with UV additive, it could fade out and it most likely will. Okay, So even though Trident paints are automotive grade um, and look at, you know, it's questionable how long a fluoro would actually last, but I would never ever use a fluoro color on an automotive surface which is in the direct sunlight a lot of the time so just keep that in mind obviously for this particular artwork it's just a canvas so it's something that can um, you know it's just going to hang up inside it's not going to be out in this in the sun um, or the elements for that matter okay
So we're really just trying to get a nice even coverage at this stage. Um, be careful with the overspray, although it's not too much of a drama because it's just going to give more of that glowing effect. Um, but you can see I'm just carefully adding that fluoro yellow colour in all the areas. So now that I've finished colouring in the eyes and the mouth with this fluoro yellow, I'm just going to use it to um, brighten up some of the orange areas, so my highlighted areas. So as you can see it works really nicely on top of the regular orange. So this is just that straight fluoro colour, right, airbrushed right on top of that uh, Createx Illustration orange. Okay, so I've now switched to the Trident Fluoro Orange and I'm just using that on all of our 3D elements. So wherever there's the carved sections, it's kind of like an added highlight, um, but it's just not as bright. So that's why it's orange rather than the yellow. But still being Fluoro Orange, we've still got plenty of punch. As you can see, I'm also using that fluoro orange just to blend back into some of those highlights. And that's again just uh, brightening up the base colour of our orange and blending nicely back into the previous highlights that we did with the fluoro, or, uh, fluoro yellow. Sorry. So you can see I'm using that uh, fluoro orange also just to blend out 
from those areas on the edge of where the carving is occurring. So this is just uh, neutralizing my fluoro yellow. I'm going to tweak or like play around with this a little bit too. So just until I'm happy with how bright and you know how effective that glow is going to be. So I'm just carefully going back through now and uh, re-highlighting those areas, just the carving areas, just to re-brighten them up with that fluoro orange. So as you can see, still using that fluoro orange just to get them even brighter, those areas. So just working back over those uh, spots and nice and careful to control my overspray and get even coverage. Okay, so now we're beginning to paint the stem of the pumpkin. I'm using a Trident Terra Verde color and I've mixed this one to one. However, I wasn't happy with the exact positioning of it. I wanted to make it a little bit wider. So I've gone back to my white and I'm just sketching that in and then I'm going to go back to my Terra Verde to continue to coat it and detail it. So just carefully uh, up along the edges first and then uh, coating it like pulling back a bit further from the surface not so much with the uh, trigger you can compensate a little bit but we just want to give it a nice uh, reasonable even coverage so now I've switched to my Segola X-Tech 100 and I'm using white and I'm just adding some highlights into the stem so straight over the top of the Terra Verde color. I'm also going to continue to use the white to start to add highlights to the pumpkin. So you can see I'm up nice and close and just going to follow the shapes of the skin. and also like kind of stipple the highlights a little bit so that it's not just one smooth glow we want to start to add some texture as well to create that pumpkin skin appearance
So using white I'm just going over some of those areas in the eyes um, just to build up the base colour for the glow. So by putting the white back on and then going back over with our fluoros we're going to gradually get that brighter and brighter. So doing the same with the white, carefully uh, going around those areas of the teeth, just again to brighten that inner glow section. So now you can see we switch back to our fluoro yellow and with that white base colour you can see how much that yellow is really popping. So you notice there I'm using the fluoro yellow just to brighten up some of those areas uh, where the teeth are being carved out. So I'm working that or airbrushing that straight over the top of the fluoro orange that we did earlier.
Again, using the fluoro yellow just to work straight over the top of the stem. So you notice how that's really just making that uh, terra verde color a lot brighter. So we're just spraying that straight over the top. So now we've switched to the Iwata CMSB Micron. So this runs a 0.18 mil needle and I've got sepia in the uh, cup there ready to go. So I'm starting to uh, deepen my shadows with this and I'm also going to do some of the outlining in sepia uh, so that it uh, appears to be a little bit more cartoony because that's the look that we're going for for this particular project. I'm also adding some stippling near the uh, highlight section so just carefully doing that without going over all my highlights but um, it's just to further texture the pumpkin skin Now I'm starting to actually outline certain areas. So we're just starting with the teeth section here. So the carved out teeth of the pumpkin. And we're just carefully running that sepia along the edge just to create our outline. So you can notice I'm, I'm not touching the surface because I don't want it to be like hairline thin. I still want a bit of um, body to the stroke. So I'm a little bit further away, but I'm, it's hard to see on this angle, but I'm still reasonably close, close enough to get that, you know, that nice defined line because you don't want it too blurry. And um, whenever you're doing lines, I tend to look in front of where I'm traveling and follow that line. Then um, you just follow the, you know, wherever you're looking, your, your hand will follow your eyes. It just helps to keep things a bit steadier. You also notice I'm using two hands, so just to keep myself a bit steadier as well. Especially for those longer lines at the uh, corner of the mouth there. Now I'm creating my other outline just to start to make that look like it's three dimensional. Again, this is a cartoony version. If you wanted it to look more realistic, uh, we wouldn't be using the harsh lines. We would have masked out the teeth and done all that sort of stuff. So, But for this particular project, I thought we'll do something a little bit different.
So we'd like to thank all of our continued viewers and long-term subscribers, or even new subscribers for that matter. Uh, we appreciate everyone being part of this community. If this is the first time that you're watching one of our videos and you like what we do, feel free to share it, like it, um, comment. We always love hearing from you. And also, if you like, feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon, and that'll notify you every time we put out new content. But uh, we do hope that you enjoy watching this tutorial and that it's helpful for you in some way. We're going to do the same thing with the eyes, we're just going to create that sepia outline. So you notice I've just been using the sepia there just to add some further details, some lines coming off those carved sections just to make it look a bit more distressed. So we're also going to add some of that sepia into the stem. So just up nice and close around the top of that pumpkin. And then we're just going to add some 
lines, sort of dagger stroke type looking lines, just to add some of that detail to the stem there. We'll also add a bit of shading as well, just to make it appear a bit more three dimensional. So switching back to our Segola XTech 100, we're just going to start adding some more white highlights. So just working back over what we've done, adding some more texture and just brightening up some of those highlights that we did earlier. Just adding some more white highlights to the top of the stem as well. So now I've switched to Trident Black and I'm just outlining and just cleaning up the slight bit of overspray that we've got around the edge of the jack-o'-lantern. Now continuing with our black, I'm going to further detail and use this as my uh, outlining colour. So now we're going to add some of those thicker outlines with the black. So just be very careful and follow the previous sepia lines. And just get it as nice and neat as possible.
So we're going to continue to use the black to outline the lines now on the mouth area, the carved area. You'll notice that I'm only doing the lines on the outside. So the 3D inner carving that we did with the sepia, I'm going to leave that. So that'll instantly give us the appearance of thick and thin lines. Now switching back to our white, we're just going to add some white highlights just to some of the corners and uh, we'll go back over that later with some fluoro yellow. You also notice that I'm not just hitting the edges of the teeth there, I'm using that white on uh, the surface of the jack-o'-lantern and we will, like I said, we're going to add the fluoro on top of that to blend it all in but that'll brighten up the pumpkin skin. Okay, so you may wonder what I'm doing here again with the white, but I'm actually going to show you. I wasn't happy with how thick those lines on the inner section were with that thick black. So instead what I thought I'd do would be eliminate them with the white, and then uh, we can redo them with the sepia. So just remember that uh, Sometimes in a design, you, as it you know, progresses, you might want to tweak things. It's not always possible, but in this case it was uh, reasonably easy to fix. So we can, um, just by doing the white, which is opaque, it's going to eliminate that black, and then we can work back over it. You'll notice that I'm moving from eye to eye once I get a decent amount of coverage. The reason being is I'm allowing that section to dry and then um, moving back onto the previous area and it'll coat a lot quicker. 
so the paint will just build a lot quicker on the drier paint. Otherwise you may get the air pushing it through and you're just not going to get coverage. Okay, so now that we've uh, completed the white and it's dry enough, you don't need to leave it too long to dry. If you want to speed it up a bit, just hold the air on and that will help to dry your paint or get a heat gun or a hairdryer. Um, but now I'm going over the top of that white section that we've just uh, fixed with the fluoro yellow and then I'll come back in with my fluoro orange in a minute. So now we're switching to our Trident Fluoro Orange and we're going to airbrush in, uh, re airbrush in the orange. Okay, so now we're using the fluoro orange just to brighten up the skin of the pumpkin. So we're actually just coating over the, some of those highlighted areas that we created before. You can notice how much that color is really popping and it just uh, gives a great effect on top of that previous orange that we laid down. So we're just going to speed this um, up a little bit. I think you got the idea of how to um, layer that orange on top. It's basically just spray it over those white areas and you can also notice that I'm blending it over some of our other spots as well, the orange, just to really brighten that skin colour. So as you can see here, I've switched back to my sepia and I'm just uh, outlining that inner section of the eye. Just coating back over that line nice and carefully so following the previous sepia that we just did and going back over the top with a little bit more sepia just to make that uh, line a bit darker. So now I'm uh, using black again and just going back over those uh, outside lines around the eye 
um, just getting rid of the overspray there. So again, just carefully following my line that I've already done. And as you can see, that's just cleaning that overspray up nicely. So I feel I went a little bit thick on those uh, lower lines, so I'm going to eliminate them again, similar to what we did earlier, using my Segola x 100 with my Trident White. I'm just going to airbrush back over those, uh, and as you can see I'm making them skinnier, and then um, I'm just going to recolor in those areas to bring it back to the thickness of that line that I'm happy with. So it just uh, got a bit too bulky. So now that we've got our white uh, completed again, I'm just coming back in with my fluoro orange just to re-highlight those areas and recolor them. So I'm happier with that now. There's not as much weight in those exterior lines. So um, what I need to do now is just go back over with my black. Uh, that'll just again clean them up and eliminate that overspray that we've uh, created from um, fixing them up. So just be very careful with this step and uh, just make sure that you follow the line that's already there and that you don't make it thicker again. Otherwise you're gonna have to repeat the process Okay, so this is the uh, way your artwork should look at this stage. So pretty happy with that. As I said, we're going for a cartoony appearance, but I want to add some uh, smoke flame to the jack-o'-lantern. So let's go ahead and we'll do that right now. Okay, so I grabbed myself a TrueFire 2 template. Uh, one of the smaller sizes and um, using my white I'm just going to start to add some smoke flame and um, we're just going to run that out of it, uh, the, the pumpkin's mouth as well as uh, one eye. So you notice I'm using the template just to create my sharp edge and then I'm freehanding off that. So very similar to doing any sort of real fire effect, the smoke effect is um, a similar process but I'm just going to use white and um, I'm not going to do as much of a flamey sort of lick, more sort of just that subtle smoke wisping out.
actually notice uh, how much more effective that is now with the smoke coming out of the mouth and then uh, we're going to do a little bit more coming out of one of the eyes and that'll be it. So just uh, doing a couple of little smoke highlights around the stem and just tweaking those areas. So there you have it, thanks for watching and hope you like the completed jack-o'-lantern artwork. Okay, so here we have a few pictures. Uh, firstly the sketch and then we have the black canvas all sketched out. Then we've got a little bit more progress. Again, further detailing and black outlines completed. And then we have the completed artwork. So I hope you enjoyed that video and you found it helpful. If you like our content, feel free to be part of our community. Hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon and that will notify you every time we put out new content. Until next time, go grab that airbrush and do some amazing artwork and we will see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.